blood and gum. Calm down our busy minds. And open our hearts. That your word may take root and grow. Speak through me, O oh Lord, and if necessary. In spite of me. In Christ's name I pray. Survey was put out uh, by the seminary or Lutheran seminary not long ago asking people what their favorite scripture was. And you won't be surprised to learn that one of the highest ranking scriptures was Psalm 23. This beautiful psalm that's full of all these wonderful, lovely images. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord will help us not want for anything. We will lie down in green pastures, rest for our souls. Even when we walk in the valley of death, God is with us. And then there is this image that's always felt a little different to me. Maybe because it switches from nature to things real, concrete. But the Lord will prepare a table for me in the presence of my name. James Howell is a colleague of mine. He's pastor of Myers Park United Methodist Church in Charlotte. He put out on his Facebook last week this call for people to just in one sentence or so um, to speak about their mother's table. And there were all these posts, you know, about delicious and bountiful food at the table and, and great conversation and time together. And as I was reading all these comments, I got to this one written by this brave soul who said, My memory of the table growing up is horrible. The food was usually burned, and Mama was usually angry, Daddy was up and down trying to escape Mama's anger. The whole dinner time, Silence and tension. Now, I don't know what James House is going to do with these responses he got. But they touched me, especially that one, because it reminded me once again that though this is a day we celebrate mothers, that that is not a good memory for all people. And you know, Mother's Day is not a holy day in the church calendar. Mother's Day is a Hallmark Day. It's true. And Hallmark Days are marked by sweet sentimentality, sugar-coating everything, surface-level emotion. But our psalmist this morning calls our attention to a God, our God, who is deeper than a Hallmark card. A God who recognizes the pain in our lives. Sometimes the deep grief, sometimes the fear, sometimes the guilt, sometimes the hurt, but that God is with us in the midst of those places. God has prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So who are our enemies? You know, we tend to think of an enemy as being a person, right? Somebody who's out to get us. But folks, we have enemies much more formidable than another person. We have enemies that threaten to steal 
life from us each and every day. They are enemies of our fear, fear that somehow we don't measure up, fear of failure, fear that if we're vulnerable with each other, we will be hurt, fear that if we forgive the other, somehow something will be taken from us. Fear of the other who looks different from us. We have our prejudices that keep us from entering into relationship with those who would be a blessing to know. We have our shame and our guilt, our feelings of unworthiness. That no matter what we do, God can't forgive me. No matter what we do, God cannot get over what I have done. We have seen the enemy, as Pogo says, and it is us. God prepares a table in the presence of our enemies, in the presence of our fear, in the presence of our shame and our guilt. God prepares a table for us. When I was a young girl, we had a member of our church, her name was Edna Lewis. And Edna Lewis, quite frankly, I didn't like being around and was a little afraid of. Edna didn't have much in life. And she smelled funny. Her hair was not usually washed or clean, and her clothes were dirty. She had a growth on the side of her neck, some tumor or mass, and she was missing teeth. And I didn't like being around her, and every Sunday morning, my mama and daddy picked her up from church. My brother and I shamefully would hug the edges of the seats as she sat in the middle of the back seat. One morning before church, my mother said, we are having company for lunch today. And my brother and I were eager to know who it was. And she said, it's Miss Edna Lewis. Well, my brother and I got off to the side and we talked about this. <laughs> this was not a good plan, Miss Edna, at our dinner table. And so we went and petitioned Mama, why did Miss Edna have to come to lunch? It was bad enough we had to take her to church. Why did she have to come to lunch? And Mama said, she's lonely and she's hungry. And so at our round kitchen table that day after church, we had our required fried chicken. And after we all shifted our places a little bit, Miss Edna was there in our midst. Sitting in our midst where there was no seat of honor around this round table, and yet I guess all seats were seated on honor. And what I didn't know back then that I know now is that in that moment when Miss Edna was sitting at our table, the Lord had prepared a table in the midst of her enemies. At that table, she was sitting in the poverty, in her alienation, in her isolation, in the ways that she had been cast aside, looked down on. She was sitting at the table with those who had deep prejudice against her, who even feared her. She was sitting at the table of her enemies. And my brother and I were also sitting at the table in the presence of our enemies, our own fear, our own prejudice. I wish I could say that I look back on that time and I think, Oh, I learned that day what a sweet, lovely woman this Edna was. I don't have that memory. She may have been. But I do have the memory that on that day, 